Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we will be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 5. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're falling into the trap of, uh, you know, we're seeing what they can do. Now we are, the reviews are, are going to get shorter because it's more like styles matching styles and who we know, what did they give up to lose or what did they do that they normally don't do to win, something like that. So we start off, this is all A block. So we start off with Shingo Takagi versus Callum Newman. In commentary, don't know if he's 21 or older, although when I looked him up, it said he was 25. I don't usually look people up, but Cedric was saying that he's like, this is his first year. Yeah, they said that he was in the independent circuit, and man, he got recruited into Rev Pro, and... He's been wrestling for about a year, and now he's in the G1. And I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense from what you see out of him. Yes. And I was like, how long? So the earliest I could find was 2018. And so you've been wrestling, okay, um, six years. And this is what you do. This is this, this is you in six years. That means the independent scene sucks. If that's the case, I, you know, others have to speak up and let me know. But this was not this. This wasn't the best that you could see out of either of these 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 athletes. So. Um, I wrote, they did things. Newman was Ariel without being flippy floppy. So that's a good thing. Yeah. He's not flippy floppy, but he can be a very Ariel. That's, that's good. That's all right. Uh, I support that wholeheartedly. Takagi was okay, but not doing what he usually does. Nope, not at all. And then Newman started eating power moves, ate a DDT without selling as if he's a road warrior or an islander. Then Callum just hit the springboard edge crusher, got the three count. And just, there you go. He he hit the one of Osprey's specials. I mean, he just ate high damaging moves like it meant nothing. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. And see, that's the thing. You start doing that, now you look like you can't be hurt. So what can anyone do to you then? We'll see, because his next opponent is Zack Sabre. I hope Zack stretches the brakes off of him. Man, make you wish you don't have fingers. So next, we get Shoto Umino versus Great Khan. A heavy strike exchange opening that bleeds into a one-sided throwing match controlled by Okan. Shoto shows some life, but look, I had to note, it's bugging me a bit that he simply looks like a shorter, heavy set Okada. Uh huh. What is exactly what I'm sure he was going for? So, show that. Yeah. He, he's still young and he's still got to find himself. And right now he's just borrowing pieces. Hopefully he gets a. This is what I want. You know, like it just kind of happens. And that's around like thirty two, age thirty two and whatnot. You're like, yeah. I, I want I want this and I don't care what the others start to think about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because uh, he's got Okada's hair, he's already proclaimed himself the new ace and he's still calling himself the shooter which was bestowed upon him by Goon and using Goon's finisher. It's just it's just a piecemeal. Yep, but it's better than being called calling yourself the headhunter and you don't do anything but lose. I think he called himself the headhunter because he had the lariats. And lariats meant nothing. And they looked good too. They looked real good. You know, and that's not that's not his fault. That's New Japan and their booking. That's their fault. Um Shoulder hit his up and over DDT to the outside. 
After a bit of stalling, they go into another strike exchange where Shota puts his hands behind himself and just give free hits, which makes no sense, and I think they should stop it. O'Connor plot a head and arm choke, and after a while, Umino got his foot on the rope. Shota hit a cradle DDT for a two count. Shota hit the double arm DDT for a three count. Cedra is unhappy. Because I'll be honest with you, the man to beat in this should have been Great Okan yes. in this tournament. It should've, he should have been one of those, I don't know, man, him, Takagi, you know, Naito, and they keep, Evil. They keep saying the Great Okan is trying Sabre to... Sabre Jr. And, and seems so, like Jake Lee now. What is trying to beat each individual at their own style. Yeah. And I really think that if that's quote unquote what he's doing, he needs to abandon that. I get you. But it's part of his gimmick too. I, I get that. I don't know what it's called, but it's like some piecemeal marionette type thing. I don't know what it's called. Some of y'all could probably help me out on that, but that's what Great Ocon, that's his gimmick. That's what he's mimicking. And it's supposed to be something that could mimic your own moves and stuff, like uh, in Tekken series, Moku Jean. So that, that's what he's going for. Yeah. It's going. Yeah. <laughs> it's going badly. Yeah. So next, um, hold on. Let me just, okay, yeah. So next we get Jake Lee versus Zack Sabre Jr. And I said, they did a little missing in the ring uh, until, because they, they kept missing strikes and stuff um but then and i wrote until lee knee jr off the apron and he and jr just plopped so loudly on the floor because i was sitting there typing um that they missed things a little bit and then i hear pap and it was loud and i was he like just, what and cedra just laughed he sailed over the top rope clear the apron completely and just went splat on the mat and lay there like a body like a body i'm like i don't get how they can get thrown over the top rope and not get hurt you learn to land it's a distribution of weight you make it as even and as flat as possible so all the damage is absorbed evenly sort of like think about final fantasy 11 aoe abilities if they do a thousand points of damage, but that's spread evenly between six characters, you don't have to worry about taking all of that and half dying. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So outside, Lee Lee ran and hit Junior with a flying kitchen sink. And Zack Sabre Junior, I mean, he make you feel for him. Yes, he'll make you feel for him. So then I wrote style analysis. And I wrote, if Lee sticks to power and working the neck, and at that point, commentary is like, you know, there's a style analysis. I was like, are you kidding me? So <laughs> but I wrote, if Lee sticks to power and working the neck, he'll win. If Zach can ground him and work his match, he will win. So while that sounds so clear and obvious, as much um, is it must be said that their display skill is a major factor for who can gain and lose. So this is when you see your pro wrestling, your counters, your reversals, your jockeying for positions come into play when you got two, two completely different styles. You know their weaknesses. You got to see who can do what. That's, that's when it's interesting. That's when you start watching. You're not talking. You don't even know if you're breathing. You're just watching. So once back in the ring, Zach started to work Lee, but Lee, but but Jay, he wrestled his way out of it. He he wrestled his way out. He didn't beat on him. He didn't poke to the eye or bite or anything. He wrestled. And later, after a slow, stiffish strike exchange, Jake popped Zach in his ribs with an elbow that just dropped him. And Cedra loved that too. And Zach just crumples and folds up. He. He laid in so much damage on, on Zach's abdomen. And it makes sense because I don't know if it was Zach's last match or the one before, but he, he took some damage to those intercostal muscles. That's the, the, the bacon in between the ribs. 
And um, she see the cute saying, "Yeah, he's getting that bacon." That's what, that's what bacon is from 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 a pig. It's the intercostal muscle around around the ribs. And um, this is what they taught us in school. And so I don't know. I'll take that with a grain of salt, maybe. But it makes bacon sense. Bacon is salty. It, it it carried over into this match, and Jake was just trying to make him regret having a section in between his pelvis and his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so moments later, Lee landed a knee to the body. Then Jake later lands another heavy knee to the body. Zach is messed up. Okay, these shots leave Zach hollering and then writhing on the mat. Zach rushes Lee in the corner, wrestles him down, and goes into his own style. Not much time passes as Lee is forced to submit to the heavy wrist manipulations. Zach went into and it. it was you could see the desperation, the urgency. You could see it, and I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Then we get to I'm going to say one of the most messiest matches I have seen next to Toru Yano. Main event, Evil versus his former leader, Tetsuya Naito. Or, well, spoken better, Tetsuya Naito. Mm-hmm. I keep, I put that extra T in there and it shouldn't. It's not a T sound. It's like saying soup. Tetsuya. Not Tetsu, like tetanus shot. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's different yeah um I did not write much on this this is it's a mess mm-hmm it was it was especially if the if you're in Muto's position where you're trying to shut down those but what you see it was hectic yes it was hectic in that match this match went as wild as you knew it would mm-hmm. eye rakes mutual low blows ref knocked down multiple times. Red Shoes knew Evil was, was cheating and simply turned his back to him instead of counting. Just just folded his arms in the corner like, nope. Just just just, just like 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 a turtle. I love when the ref do the that shell. stuff. And he was like, nope, not going to do it. It just, mm-mm. And even though we couldn't do anything about it. Nope, couldn't do nothing. He, just, he had to eat that, and it was hilarious. They kicked out of each other's finishes, and faction members got involved, Dick threw... Powder in the evil's eyes. Yoshinobu spit whiskey in the dick's eyes. Bushi spit mist in the Nobu's eyes. And everyone was laid out. <laughs> but evil eventually picked up the win with the STO on Naito. One, two, three. It, that's... <sighs> it was a mess. It, it was, was a, mess. a crazy mess. It was highly entertaining. The crowd was into it. Yeah. The crowd was actually the loudest that I've heard them, and it was in the, that uh, bright gymnasium area. That's one of my, that's one of my the, my favorite venues. You know, um, normally we see that during the best of the Super Juniors or something, and it's just a hard camera shot. Yeah. But in this, it was production shot, various angles and whatnot like that. So that was that was still good. The only downfall of this uh, venue is the fact it's so bright. It is very, very well lit. So, I mean, you, you know, you can go back and watch day or night five, as they would say. Look, the messy, entertaining, wild, crazy. It didn't stop. Um, so, look, we got something to catch up on. Yeah. But we're going. We're not going to sit here and lollygag. We're going. You know, well, you got to go to sleep. You got work tomorrow and whatnot. It's, I do. It's eleven sixteen p.m. You've been up since how long? 6 a.m. 6 a.m. I've been in and out of sleep all day, and I had to figure out what it was, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So, yeah. <sighs> so, look, that's going to do it for us. Now that you want something to say or something. No, no, mm-hmm. that's it. It's been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 5. And with that, I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>